muscle confusion. Um, this is one that gets so much hate, and it's not fair. It really isn't. It's ridiculous that people get so worked up over things. I feel like a lot of people get a sense of superiority just by pointing something out and saying, that's wrong. And then they feel, I don't know, it's like by being a critic and just pointing out that someone else is wrong, that you've contributed something to the discussion, uh, which you haven't. All you did was just tell us that that's wrong. Well, then tell us what's right. You know, if you're going to speak up and point out that something's incorrect, then I would hope that you have the correct answer instead. Um, this is a Weeder principle, Joe Weeder, and um, the Weeder principles are great. They are, and so is muscle confusion. But I'm going to talk about why, specifically, muscle confusion is actually a good principle. So it's the wrong term, uh, or it's maybe not the, the appropriate term, or the right term, right? Because muscles don't get confused. But as far as practice and implementation, it makes perfect sense. Basically, we adapt to a stimulus, and so you should change the stimulus. This is actually tied into a previous video that I did where I talked about changing the movement. At some point, you've done so many high bar back squats that it becomes law of diminishing returns. So what do you do? You switch to a front squat, or you switch to a safety bar squat, or you switch to a low bar back squat. I don't care. Switch to some other type of squat. It's that simple. That is the principle of muscle confusion. I realize muscle confusion is the wrong term because, like I said, muscles don't get confused. You're not confusing the muscle, okay? But it really, like, we could just rephrase that and say that, okay, that's the wrong term for it because the word confusion would imply some kind of thought process. But what we're really saying here is, as far as implementation, change the movement. Whoa, what? It's the same thing that Westside did. Westside would just keep switching the movements. It's like, well, we're going to squat to a high box. Now we're going to squat to a low box. We're going to use, you know, a camber bar. We're going to use a safety bar. We're going to use, you know, whatever. Like, they just constantly changed it. That's all you're doing. That's the entire principle of muscle confusion. It's changing the movement. This time we're going to bench press. Next time we're going to do... You know, bench press with a camber bar. Next time we're going to do a bench press with, I don't know, a tsunami bar or whatever that thing is that bends and bounces. Then we're going to do board presses. Then we're going to do, you know, pin presses. Then we're going to, like, you just keep changing the movement. That's it. That's the principle of muscle confusion. So while I appreciate the fact that the term muscle confusion is the issue that people are fired up about, the actual practice is what matters more. You know, it's kind of like I tell people all the time, um, I'm just going to tie this into something else as an analogy here, but like the whole idea of counting calories, that's not very useful. Like it just isn't. And it's not because like you're wrong or something. I mean, maybe you have great willpower and you can count calories and you can force yourself to stick to it. But for most people, like in terms of practice, um, it's much more effective to give people like habit, routine, basic steps. Uh, I really like the way the precision nutrition does theirs. You know, they're like, oh, it's like a thumb size of fat with like a palm size of protein and, you know, a hand size of vegetable or whatever it is. They use this eyeball method basically, right? And in practice, you are still basically limiting your caloric intake. Like you're just reducing caloric intake. You're regulating it or rather. I shouldn't say you're just reducing. Um, you are by some method, <laughs> you you are regulating your intake. So if I want to lose weight, I'm going to eat slightly less than, you know, if I want to gain weight, I'll eat two palms of protein. And if I want to lose weight, I'll eat one palm of protein, right? Like, it's just a different method for tracking your intake. But it's so much more effective because you don't have to sit there and, you know, do math and punch it into an app and all this stuff like that. So you've taken a step out for people. It's not because you can't do the app. Go ahead and do the app if you want to do the app. It's just that in practice, for a lot of people, it's so much easier to give them a visual and be like, here, like it's a palm size of protein. Boom. And like that just works easier for people, okay? Sometimes the way that you implement something matters more 
simply because it's whether or not people can stick to it or people understand the practice of it or whatever. It's like I could sit here and talk to you all about, let's talk about muscle hypertrophy and let's get real deep into it. So I'll talk to you about the importance of phosphatidic acid as a signaling molecule. You know, it stimulates mTOR-C, complex one specifically, inside the muscle. Does that matter? No. No, it doesn't. Like if I sat here and told you all about sarcoplasmic hypertrophy and how you know there's this calcium and the magnesium and all these things that are happening, you don't give a shit. Do you care about myonuclei? No. So what what matters is the implementations, the practice. We're just going to progressively overload, whether it's by adding more weight or it's by adding reps or it's adding sets or whatever it is. Like that's the part that people need. The pe part that people actually need is the part that they're going to implement. Um, if I sat here and did a video for you guys explaining all the mechanisms, all, let me tell you about lactate. Lactate is a signaling molecule. That doesn't help you. That doesn't tell you anything about what you need to do. Um, and so similarly, like this whole concept of muscle confusion and stuff like that, we can get into all this stuff about like allostatic load versus homeostasis and, you know, talking about all these different things of how like there's the law of diminishing returns and, you know, how it pulls on the tendon and where the pressure is. And, or I could just tell you like whenever you stall and you plateau, change the movement. Which one of those is more useful to you? You know, so people can go ahead and bash muscle confusion. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that it's a great term. It isn't. But at the same time, if you're going to bash it, then you need to tell people the correct answer. And the correct answer is simply, it's the idea that if you keep doing the same movement over and over and over again, it's law of diminishing returns. So change the movement. It really is that simple. Uh, if you guys like the video, like the video. If you have an opinion on this, comment below. Um, you know, I'm sure you have all experienced this thing where you just kept doing bench presses or squats or whatever. And eventually it just goes like i'm not getting anything more out of this then you switch to even dumbbell crunches or you know incline benches or whatever um or you switch to safety bar squats or front squats and suddenly you, your lift started improving again why well because you changed the stimulus so like it really is that simple like a novel stimulus is going to elicit an adaptation boom there you got it if you guys like this kind of content be sure to subscribe uh, and I hope this was useful, at least. I hope it was helpful. I hope, you know, maybe someone out there that's heard the muscle confusion thing uh, doesn't understand the point of it. It's just one of the weeder principles. And like I said, it's not a great term, but the implementation of it makes perfect sense. You're going to change the movement every so often. You know, don't always do hammer curls. Do hammer curls and then eventually you switch to a preacher curl. Boom. Like, it's that simple. Um, don't overthink these things because it really, like... We can get into all this nitty gritty science stuff, but like, does that actually matter in terms of implementation? Not really. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope this helps even just one person. Thanks so much for your time.